Hey guys, and thanks for joining. It's a meet from Unlimited Elements. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take some HTML and CSS and turn it into a Elementor dynamic widget, which is editable from the Elementor uh, front-end editor. So I found uh, this HTML and CSS on CodePen, which is a great site for finding HTML and CSS snippets. It's a gradient flip box, and which when you hover over it, it gives the price and a call to action button. I liked how it looked. So the first step is to clean out this HTML and CSS, leave only one box, maybe change the classes a little bit and whatever you want to do with HTML and CSS, you, de you do need to know HTML and CSS to do that. So I cleaned it up, I forked it and I cleaned it up. This is my clean version, which has only one box. And uh, one of the important things is to use an ID. Uh, you do want your selector to use an ID. Uh, it's important because we will have many instances of this HTML and CSS on the page and we don't want them to conflict. So if we use the dynamic ID feature inside of the widget creator, uh, then uh, if we will have many boxes, the CSS of them won't conflict. Perfect. So we've cleaned it up and now we're going into the process of making the widget itself. To make the widget, let's go into our WordPress. Click on Unlimited Elements. If you don't have it installed, you can install it for free. Also the widget creator. And most of the features are free and uh, make sure you're in the correct category in our case it's flip boxes or I could have put it maybe inside of pricing tables as well since it's a pricing table flip box I'm gonna click add widget and I'm gonna call it pricing table and flip box click tab widget name is populated automatically and click add widget it's been added to the list I'm gonna double click it on it to edit it over here in icon we can use we can search for an icon let's use a pricing tab and the next step is copying inside the HTML so I'm going into my example I'm gonna copy all of the HTML and paste it inside of the HTML next step CSS. I'm going to copy all of the CSS and paste that into the CSS. Now, before I start creating fields and anything else that I want to do over here, I do want to check that it's working properly. So I'm going into pages, open link, and let's move this over here. This we can close. Click add new. Edit with Elementor. And I'm going to search for the widget in my widget panel. So let's search for the word flip. We can find it over here with our icon that we chose. And I'm going to drag that inside. OK. As you can see, first of all, I have a problem, which I pasted the HTML twice. So let's fix that. I'm going to click Publish. I'm going to go back into the HTML. And over here, as you can see, I pasted it twice by mistake. We click update. Let's just validate that we didn't do the same thing with the CSS. Perfect. Let's refresh over here. And it's working. Another thing I want to change is I want this widget to be full width instead of uh, being a fixed width. So let's scroll over here. I have max width configured. I'm going to take that off, click update and test. Now, this is the beginning of the widget, and we need to start creating fields. If I'm going to click on it in Elementor, we don't have anything that we can change, and we want to start creating fields. So, we're going to take this one by one. Each one uh, needs to be handled differently and let's start doing it so over here we can close our code pen already 
and the first one is the icon so for the icon I'm going to go into attributes click add attribute search for the icon field I'm going to call this icon and the default value will be in any class I want from font awesome since uh, Elementor uses font awesome and go into the HTML find the class and replace it with a attribute that we've added to the list click update and test so everything I do before continuing to the next step I like to test to see that it's working properly and as you can see now we have an icon selector where we can choose any icon we like and it's changing also in the front end next one is the heading so we can call that title and we need to change the attribute type to text field and we want to change it and or enable font editing so let's go, go to HTML and replace the static with title perfect click update and go back to test click on it and let's change the text perfect so this is working as well Next thing we want to do is take care of this list over here. So the list has a couple of items in it. Currently it has one, two, three, four items. And this can be a bit tricky since we don't want to make four static fields. We're going to make a widget that's dynamic and we don't know how many fields the user will input. So we need to make this work with items. In Unlimited Elements Widget Creator, click Item Attributes enable items yes and now we have fields for the items so go back into the HTML I'm gonna copy the HTML of all the items and cut that out and instead I'm gonna click put items this create a loop and the HTML of the loop goes down over here inside of item HTML I'm gonna paste the HTML and over here we need only one item now we can replace this with item title let's add raw as we have over here and click update let's see how it looks so now when refreshing we don't have a list at all I'm gonna click to edit but we do have an option to add items so let's add an item and and see how it looks looks good let's add another one another one Perfect. So as you can see, we can add items uh, using the Elementor editor. And we don't have a problem to do that. Looks good. Let's save. So that's working good. Next thing, next field we want to do is the only. So over here we have only and then the price and then the button itself. So let's go into attributes. I'm going to call this a subtitle or maybe let's call it okay subtitle allow font editing replace it over here and let's also do the same thing for the price perfect and we're in the button the button is an a href tag which is great so it's, that's how links work 
and we're going to attributes click add attribute and this type we want to add is not a text field but it's a link field so over here we're going to call a button link maybe and the default will be hashtag go into the html and we want to replace where the link goes this <coughs> button link after the href we add a space and we can paste in the attributes the attributes are in, i will show you that in the front end editor what it is so let's refresh over here Click the widget to edit, and you can see we have uh, the button link attribute over here. And the attributes are when you click on this cogwheel, they open a new window and add no follow. So this will work only if you have added this attribute inside the HTML. Perfect. And uh, you can see also the subtitle and price. That we've added earlier let's change the price just to test how it works as you can see it's been changed we also want to enable an option to change the button text so let's add an attribute for that i'm going to call it button text perfect it's going to be a text field let's call it uh, buy now inside of the html i'm going to change the static text with the attribute we created perfect so up to now we've changed all the html data into dynamic attributes which you can edit inside of elementor the next thing i want to do is show how we can use the css to create attributes also for styling so the main thing in this um, widget is the colors the back the gradient background color which uh, we determine by two colors it's a gradient between two colors which is flipped on the back side so i'm just gonna uh, give an option to add color one and color two and uh, play around with this inside of the css so over here let's go for a color type field and I'm going to call it gradient color one. Let's select uh, a bluish kind of color and add attribute. And I'm going to duplicate this field. Not many of you know there is an option to duplicate. And we'll change the name to two. And let's play around with the color a little bit. Perfect. So we have color one and color two. Let's go into the CSS and put over here color one. Color one and color two. Perfect. Time to test it. Let's refresh. And let's save before refreshing. It's important. And you can see that color has taken effect. We can click and edit. Perfect. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this column to see how it behaves when we have more than one on the page. Now, if I'm going to click on the first one and try to change the color, and we might run into a problem because they're both using the same CSS. To handle this problem, we have something that's called dynamic uh, IDs. Let's save and go inside of the HTML and change the ID of the card to a dynamic ID over here, right here on the right side. You see ID is a dynamic ID. I'm going to copy that ID inside of the CSS and what I need to do is make sure that everywhere we have this ID we're going to change it to the dynamic ID instead of the static one
Over here we do need it also, even though it, it wasn't configured in the beginning. Looks good. Make sure not to miss anything. Perfect. Let's test. Nice. Now if we duplicate and change the color, there won't be any conflicts and each one can get its own color. Of course, the content as well can be different and we don't have any conflicts. Perfect, so we've got this set up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a number field for determining how big the uh, icon will be. Let's find this in the CSS first of all. So it's configured over here, it's 52 pixels font size. I'm going to go into attributes, add attribute, and I'm going to change this to icon size. Number type field. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, Fux suffix is none. And I'm going to change, put here a default value. Go into the HTML, uh, the CSS. Change the 52 to the icon size. Now, over here in attributes, we can put this near the icon. So it will have context instead of being the last one now it's next to the icon so people understand which icon size they're going to be changing let's refresh to test click and over here we can we have icon size let's change that to 38 and you can see it be, became smaller Perfect. So I think we got everything set up. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments or contact me personally. And, and that's about it. Thank you for joining and see you next time.